got a little interesting story time. Had some issues <clears throat> here recently with my blazer. Um, I was looking through my toolbox and I'd come across one of these K&N stub stacks. I'd forgot I owned it. It was just kind of in the top of my big toolbox. So I thought, well, I'll throw that little stub stack on there and see if it makes it run any better. Well, we took the blazer over to Star Performance in Kansas. Got stuck in traffic, ended up side by side with a little foreign car. Was trying to mess with us. And no, I was not trying to race this guy in rush hour traffic. <clears throat> but I was going to get on it one time and just kind of play back with him. And I mean, my car just puttered and, you know, basically fell on its face. Anything over about 3,500 RPM, it literally just sounded like it was, you know, possibly going to die. It was choking and popping so bad. Well, I came home thinking maybe maybe there was something wrong with my rear float. Maybe, you know, maybe there was something dirt, trash got in the carburetor or something I didn't know. Just so happens I was reading online. If you run one of these K&N stub stacks, and this is just a 850 double pumper center section that I'm using as a reference, but if you run one of these stub stacks, you have to run a minimum of a four inch air cleaner, and they recommend five to six inch elements to be run with a K&N stub stack. So I'm like, oh well, crap, I've only got like a three inch, you can see it over there, I've got like a three inch air cleaner on there, I bet you that's causing the problems. So uh, I took it out again last night, tried to do an acceleration test getting on the highway, sure enough, it was popping and sputtering and acting retarded. So today, I had a little extra time, I thought, yeah, I'm going to pull that stupid thing off and just see if that's possibly causing it. And sure enough, you pull that stupid can in stub stack off of there with that short three inch element and it goes back to running fine. Now I don't know how it's disturbing or interrupting the airflow into the carburetor, but I've heard you have to have a certain amount of distance between the top of that stub stack and the top of your air cleaner for the air to be able to turn properly and that when you have too short of a air cleaner on there it's kind of hard to see but you see your vent tube is obscured it literally opens into the radius on the back of this if you see that plastic let's see if I get close enough see how that radius on that plastic literally dumps straight down into your vent tube well that was another concern everybody had brought up was if you don't have the extended vent tubes on your main body the stub stack will actually interfere with the oh I guess it'd be the venting of your fuel bowls and can actually cause problems in that area too so no, regardless I pulled that crap off of there well as I was testing it after pulling the can and stub stack off I noticed that I had this weird dead spot like the engine would launch pull good and then somewhere around I was just guessing 4800 to 5200 it just felt like the engine kind of fell out of kind of it wasn't pulling anymore and I kept thinking gosh are these valve springs getting old already why is this thing not pulling because I mean I have a small cam I'm going to admit that but it ought to pull the 5500 no problem and it was barely been able to pull the 5,000, 5,200, and I felt like, gosh, I better shift because it's not really, not really pulling like it should. Well, I got to reading online because when I rebuilt or actually created that Holly 780 that's on the Blazer, when I jetted it and set up the little vacuum secondaries, I went with the middle of the road purple secondary barrel it's the secondary vacuum actuation I put the purple spring in there because oh, you know, I've seen other people run those and that's probably a good place to start 
lo and behold, you start doing research online, the purple secondary spring for a vacuum secondary is Holly will work decent on 402 or larger cubic inch applications but when you put that in a small block Chevy 350 or on top of a small block 350 it literally okay now get this it'll start opening the it'll start opening the four barrel somewhere around 19 I want to say you'll have to look it up online it's around 1900 rpms or something but it won't fully open your four barrels until 6950 rpm bing 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 I'm going what why would they have that thing so slow that it's not even gonna because you know the way the vacuum secondary carburetor works you basically drive around on two barrel and then you floor it, it'll manually open your uh, flaps, your secondary uh, butterflies or venturies will be open, but it doesn't really introduce, you know what I mean, like it'll, it's hard to explain because it's not like an Edelbrock carburetor. It doesn't allow secondary air and fuel enrichment unless the engine wants it. So if the engine never creates enough venturi or demand, the secondaries on the vacuum secondary, do, they don't do anything. So, I'm thinking, oh, is this carburetor too big? What's going on with this thing? Why in the world would this thing not even open the four barrel? So, uh, I do a little test the other night, and I'm like, yep, it's still doing it. You hit it from a dead stop or a roll, and it just jumps RPM until it just hits a dead spot, like a lull right around 4800 to 5200 somewhere in that area and then once it clears 5200 that engine will sing just fast as it wants to to 6000 rpms and I'm like okay so I come home do a little research and I start looking up all these little vacuum secondary springs I'm like okay there's the purple one up front by me I've got all the different colors if you'll notice I don't have the white one in my little box because what I found out was 350 cubic inch engine if you're you know if you want those if you want that four barrel all the way open and functioning you need to put in either the white spring the short yellow or the tall yellow on a 350 there would be no application that I can think of other than bone stock you know pulling a trailer that you would ever want it to slow down your secondary activation more than that. So online, a bunch of the guys on the Z28 forums and Corvette forums, they were saying, throw the white spring in there, go test it. If it doesn't bog, if it screams like a banshee, leave it alone and run it. If it bogs, go to the, I think it's the short yellow. If it still has a little bog, go to the tall yellow. So they basically recommend and start with the weakest spring you can and go stiffer from there until you can launch it and go wide open throttle with no bog or no howl. So I took it today. I didn't want to change anything else. So I just pulled my, I've got a quick change secondary vac, you know, vacuum secondary uh, pod cover. So I quickly pulled out the purple spring right there in the front, threw in the little short white one took it out for a test romp it's like a whole new car now keep in mind I've had this thing running for well over a year year and a half you know I've played with it a little bit tuned the jets the accelerator pump you know got it running pretty good I thought changing to that white vacuum secondary spring made such a huge difference it's, it's like a different vehicle Literally, I can hit it from a from a dig or a dead stop or a roll, and that engine will pull cleanly to 6,000 RPMs with no hesitation at all. It's not howling like a quadrajet. It's not bogging. It's literally just coming on right now and pulling to six grand every time. So that's just a little hint to everybody out there that just because it's running good doesn't mean it's running as good as it could. You know, because I've 
honestly, I haven't used a vacuum secondary carburetor on a vehicle since I was like 18 or 19 years old. Uh, being 47 now, that's a long time ago. So uh, makes me wonder if back when I had my yellow 70 Chevelle when I was 18 or 19, if I could have run a little quicker and beat a few more cars if I'd known how to tune that vacuum secondary spring. But that's a different story. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up. That if you're going to run the K&N stub stack, either don't run an air cleaner and make sure you extend your vent tubes for your bowls or run a minimum of a four, preferably five or six inch element so it doesn't bog and make it run like poop. Um, on the vacuum secondary activation, just because you think it's running good, go buy the spring kit and a quick change uh, top for your diaphragm and play with them because I'm here to tell you I would have never thought that this thing could run that much better just by changing a little spring on the carburetor. Um, just as a closing I uh, have I had my timing set at 16 initial which was giving me right around 31 degrees total because I'm not really racing my vehicle, so I kind of had the timing pulled back just to, you know, deter any uh, possibility of detonation and not cause any uh, pre-ignition problems, hard starting, anything like that. Well, after I'd played with that secondary spring, I thought, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a little timing back into my little 350 I've got, bump it up to 36 degree total, and just take it out and see how she likes it. Um, let's just say this, changing to that, you know, white vacuum secondary activation spring and bumping it from 31 to 36 degrees total, it's made this blazer where you just absolutely cannot race from a dig unless you've got slicks. Because even if I hold the RPMs down, because my stall, I can stall it up to 2800 on the foot and flash it to 36. But if I just hold it to 2,000 and try to punch it, you know, put it to the floor, it'll literally smoke the tire so hard that I'm not even going anywhere. So it's, it's absolutely worthless. That's how much difference a little white spring and adding, what, five degrees of time into my engine made. So anyway, I just thought that was pretty interesting that I'd been running around in street mode or daily driver mode for so long I didn't realize how much there was to gain so anyway she's set up to run now no hard starting no detonation no run on when you turn it off good restart tune your cars play with every part you know don't take anything for granted give everything a try and see if you can tweak it and get a little more power out of it who knows you might be looking for a set of cheater slicks or some McCurry dirt tires or something so you can try to hook it up and go. Thanks for watching.